Hello and welcome to this video how you can start Flowable with Docker. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you how you can um, start Flowable with Docker and download the images from our artifactory. Before we get started, actually two side notes. First of all, only customers have access to our artifactory. So when you are not a customer, you are not able to do what we see here in this video. Second, this setup is not meant to be used in production. Typically in production, you want to scale and then you should use something else than a simple Docker uh, compose file on one machine. Now to get started, we first need a terminal. In that terminal, we can enter docker login repo.flowable.com and next we provide our username. Now it is asking us next for the password and there we have two options. Either we enter the password or we go to repo.flowable.com and uh, create there an identity token. So therefore let's sign in here with the username and password. Once we are signed in, we can now click here on our user menu, then go to edit profile. Once we are there, we can say generate an identity token. We simply call that one Docker and say next. It's now showing us the token. We can use the copy button to copy it to our clipboard and then close it. Now let's go back to the terminal. In here, we can paste our token and then we are signed in. Next step is to create a docker compose file. So let's call that docker compose.yaml and then we are going to enter here the content of the docker compose file. Now I'm not going to type that manually. I go back to the documentation and in the documentation, we actually have a sample docker compose file. Therefore click on administrator, then on installation then installation with Docker, scroll a little bit down and here you have a Docker compose file. At the top right, there's a copy button. So let's copy it. Then we go back to our terminal. Here we can paste it. We save the file and we say docker compose up dash D, which is going ahead and downloading uh, the images and starting the images as well. The command already came back but it actually did not finish the starting yet. So the start might happen in the background. While that is happening, let's have a look at the documentation page. So in here at the top, we have uh, again the note that you shouldn't use that as a production setup and also not for load testing. Then we see here that you need to have a, a username and password. We see the Docker login command which we just entered so you can also simply copy that one from here and then we see a list of the different images available and below that we have the docker compose file let's get into details for the docker compose file so first section here is actually our database to run flowable we need a database here we are using postgres we configure it with some credentials and we say that we would like to have a volume. That volume gives us the possibility uh, to save the data, even if somebody removes the container. Next is Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is actually optional, but when you don't use Elasticsearch, you also need to disable it then uh, for global work. So that you need to set global indexing enabled to false. Here we configure a little bit the Elasticsearch cluster. We say again, this has a volume and then we set some memory limits that Elasticsearch is able to run. Next in the section here, we have global work. Flowable work actually is the part um, where we are starting uh, the runtime application of Flowable. We have here the image. The image here is with latest, which will download the latest image available the first time when you execute it. You might want to check out the release notes here on the left hand side to find out the latest version of Flowable. Next, we have some configuration uh, possibilities in here. Important here is the content storage folder. Since we are saving the content items 
to the file system. When somebody removes the container, you still would like to keep uh, those content items. That's why it is here configured on a volume. Uh, we have here the port, so 8090 will be the port for flowable work, and it redirects to 8080 of our flowable pod or container. Actually, that's not a pod. And then we have here some dependencies. We have a user root that is that we are able to uh, run the, in the content storage, and we have a restart policy in case flowable fails to start the first time. Next is global design in here. Flowable design is uh, the same. We have the image here, here again latest. We have here also some configuration how to access global work. Therefore, we have those uh, properties here to access it to get the list of users as well as deploy artifacts. Then we have the authentication. So in case you would change uh, your global work admin user or the password for the admin user, you would need to adapt that as well. And we have the database configuration here. Same for flowable control. Flowable control is actually running on 1892, while flowable design is running on 8091. So let's go to localhost 8091, and then we can sign in to flowable design with the username admin and the password test. Once signed in, the first thing what we can do is checking the license. So we do not have any license yet. So we can say we would like to upload the license. I have that one in my downloads folder. So there's my global license file. So let's upload this one and say upload. Then we see here how long my license is valid. And when we now go back to workspaces, our generated default workspace, we can start modeling. I will create a sample app and press create. And here a simple sample process. And here we are going to just simply add one user task. When you are interested in how you can model, then please check out our videos, um, Hello World with uh, Flowable, since there I'm going into more details. And now let's go to our Flowable work installation. Here we have now the same credentials, admin and test, and you can say new work. And we see here now some sample applications as well as our sample process, which we just have created. I'm going to start this one. We see our user task in that one. We can go here in the history, see our process. Eventually we can complete the task. And with that, we are done with the process. For completeness, let's just open Flowable Control. Then we can sign in with admin and test. We see some statistics in here about the process which we just have started. We see our sample app in here, which we just have uh, deployed. And with that, um, we also have the one execution in here of our process as a sample process in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.